Hi there, welcome back to your weekly fill of Bonsai Chatter. This is the Bonsai Stuff Podcast, and in case you didn't know, I'm Scott Martin from Bonsai Matsu. Thank you for listening in. As always, we greatly appreciate it. This episode of the podcast, I want to have a bit of a chat about my time in New Zealand. I loved it. I really, really did. I can't believe, I'm embarrassed to say it, that I haven't been there before. It's so close to where, where I live in Melbourne. Australia, that um, that it's a place I should have definitely been before and I can hand on heart guarantee you that I'm going to be going back there. So I'm going to talk a bit about um, what happened across the ditch and um, the uh, the new new friends that I've made and trees I've got to work on, all the exciting stuff. So that's going to be part of this. Also, I want to talk a bit about um, a, uh, a, a keeping it simple, uh, an approach that I use throughout my entire life and especially when it comes to bonsai and I want to chat a bit more about that um, and also with the high of going to New Zealand and having this lovely watering system all set up and all perfect I'll, uh, I'll let you know a little bit of a bit more of a saga on that too I'm not going to dwell on it but um, but I'll go into it and prove that even with best laid plans and and all the time and all the training that you know, stuff can still go wrong so anyway let's get into it So New Zealand, loved it. Got invited over there by uh, by a buddy of mine, Aaron from Shiro Bonsai, who is uh, based in Christchurch. And you, uh, if you're anywhere in that area, or anywhere in New Zealand, then he's the guy. He's the one you should reach out to. He's the, um, as far as I'm concerned, he's one of the the future shining lights of um, bonsai. And he's dedicated, he's passionate, and he's driven, which is great. So he's uh, he's one to um, definitely keep and keep an eye on. So. Got invited over there, did some um, did some demonstrations at a beautiful venue, amazing venue. And if you've seen anything on um, on any social media platforms, the venue that um, that had been organised was uh, was brilliant. One of the best I think I've ever done a demo in. To be honest, and I was worried about making it messy. It was so um, so nice, like big you know big lounge chairs and very comfortable and beautiful view, and it was just amazing. So what I found was there's a lot of similarities in uh, in people between Australia and New Zealand, which I knew anyway because um, cause we're so close. While I was there, someone from New Zealand called um, called Australia West New Zealand. So <laughs> that's, how, that's how close we are with them. And the, um, the generosity and friendship of the people that were there, I think, made, made it – very um very very satisfying such a such a beautiful trip to know that you know that bonds i love you no matter where you go it's there and it's that common passion you know i found it whenever i've traveled around australia or even speaking locally with people in australia that that common link that we have for our trees these little things in pots that we love so much unites us and it doesn't matter what our background is you know what it, what we're doing in our life what stage we're at but we all seem to come together and, and I think that's really important that um that inclusivity and it's going to be a bit of a, a thread through this um through this uh this this podcast and the passion you know the passion just doesn't seem to um doesn't seem to stop so I got to um got to do some some workshops at at Shiro Bonsai as well they had a had a full day full day workshop with heaps of people in there with lots of beautiful trees and that was the thing I was really blown away at was to find out that in New Zealand species that here in Australia we um we love to have in our collection some exotics you know likes of Scots pines and mugos and and a few others around the place are considered weeds over there which blew me away so much to the point that I um after the the working in uh, Christchurch Went and did a bit of a sightseeing trip down to Queenstown, which is an amazing place, incredible. Um, but I was I flicked on the TV one morning, and there was a thing about um, this uh, this this group that goes around and they're removing the invasive species that are taking over from the natives. And when they started talking, they were talking about you know the Doug firs, uh, Scots pines, radiata pines, mugos, all that sort of stuff, and how they just go around and there's there's massive efforts being made to to basically chop off these trees at the base and get rid of them, so it's not a um, not an ongoing issue. And then I jumped on their website and had a look, and you can download this this brochure, which actually details all of these 
bonsai species, <laughs> which we we love to have in our collections. And here they are, they're, they're growing wild throughout most of New Zealand and they're being eradicated. Of course it has issues because, you know, when they're, um, when they're noxious weeds, they can't be sold, can't be transported, can't be shown or there's limitations on, on showing and travelling around with these trees. But to know that they're growing wild like that and you can basically walk anywhere and, and pluck them out of the ground, it's just insane. Like I'm sure there's there's regulations and requirements and whatever, so don't take my word for it. But from my point of view, after I'd seen this, when I was driving back to Christchurch, I'd pay far more attention to the the pine species that I'd see on the side of the road. And I go, yep, there's a Scots pine. Yep, there's a Mugo pine. Yep, there's a radiata. And it's like these things are so prolific that the the environment that they're growing in. Is, is causing them to spread so rapidly and so quickly that I was just blown away. And, you know, talking to, to some people over there, I was saying, I'd love to be able to just walk out and collect the Scots pine. <laughs> you know, not talking about how they're collecting um, cedars and uh, just, anyway, mind-blowing. So I think that um, one um, one thing that, that sort of I was, I was really, really uh, blown away by was the natural beauty of the place. And it's everywhere. You know, it wasn't what I expected when I got to Christchurch. A lot flatter than what I'd expected. I expected far more hilly, but it's got its own beauty with some foothills and beaches. And you know, then you get and you get further down down south and towards the west. And oh my god. Anyway, so long story short, there's going to be um, a YouTube release coming out in the channel for it because I was so excited that I filmed a lot of stuff when I was over there. Trees that I worked on, people I got to meet the places I got to go to and the natural beauty of, of New Zealand, it just um, it just blew me away. And the native species that they've got over there, my goodness, a native beach, I've fallen in love with it. I've said it t- it'll take a lot to get another tree into my collection. I'm at the point now where I'm at sort of maximum for, for where I'm at. You know, it's very rare that I'll take cuttings or plant seeds or anything like that, but... I've come back from New Zealand and I am determined to get a New Zealand beech tree in my collection. I got to work on a massive one. This fellow by the name of Charles got to uh, let me work on his, um, his his massive native black beech over there and it's got the smallest little leaves and it was just a magnificent tree and I, to be honest with you, I fell in love with it. So I've um, I've done some some searching since I've, I've come back home and... And uh, someone's put me in touch with where I can um, track down a red beach, New Zealand native red beach. So that might be um, another addition to the to the Bonzo Matsu collection because um, yeah, it's just just truly amazed by by the species, how they grow, and, and just the environment that they grow in. And you know, walking around the botanic gardens over there in Christchurch, the size of the trees, my goodness, <laughs> the age of some of the trees there, even some of our Australian eucalypts are over there and I have never seen trees that big in my entire life. You know, you have to take a, a packed lunch to walk around the base of these things. <laughs> They're that bloody big. So um, anyway, New Zealand, love it. It was um, it's a brilliant experience. Cannot wait to get back there. Loved, um, loved meeting new people, which is I think the buzz that I get, you know, this bonsai network that I talk about, for me now I personally feel like it's got that little bit bigger. You know, the world's become again a little bit smaller because we're all united and all all on the same same path to uh, enlightenment with these um, these beautiful little trees and and you know just because you um, you go to another country and have to take your passport with you doesn't mean that anything changes. <laughs> it's such a such a magnificent place. So anyway, New Zealand, keep an eye out for it. If you haven't been there, get over there. Shiro Bonsai, you know, and he's got a cafe opening too, so track him down on, on the socials and have a look because he's opening up a Bonsai cafe and it's going to be so cool. So can't wait to get back there and, and thoroughly love my time. Sorry for the interruption. I really hope you're enjoying the podcast as much as I'm enjoying making it. Makes the bonsai world feel a little bit smaller and a lot more cosy. Anyway, I would love for you to become a supporter of the podcast by subscribing for as little as $3 a month. This support will go directly towards the cost of producing this podcast and it's entirely optional. The link to become a supporter is in the episode notes for each edition. Now that's over, let's get into the podcast.
I want to start this uh, this next section about you know it's going to be on not overcomplicating things and inclusion and all that sort of stuff. Well, uh, but I want to start by saying there's more scams going on, more people trying to sell my trees. So you know I typically take my photos a certain way. They've got a dark background. If you ever see anything, call it out for the rubbish that it is, and or let me know about it. Just reach out to me, however you can through email, social media, whatever it is. ScottAtBonzoMatsu.com if you need an email me. But let me know about it because it's um, it's rubbish. Like I can't stop people from using my, my photos. I can't put, stop scammers from trying to take your hard-earned money from you. But I would just suggest, and, and it's time to reiterate it again, just be um, just be really careful if you're going to buy stuff online, sight unseen, that um, you just need to take every precaution to protect yourself. And that doesn't matter whether it's for bonsai or whatever. Scammers seem to be going berserk at the moment. So... I do apologise if anyone's been um, been, uh, been affected by it. It's definitely nothing to do with me. I'm definitely not going to sell my, my trees online in that sort of a forum. So it's um, it's complete rubbish if it happens. Anyway, enough said with that. All right. So now I was um, I was sitting down when I was in New Zealand with uh, with Aaron and we were having a chat at a, at a cafe, having a lovely little coffee. Found a great little place, and we were just talking about all things bonsai. You know, just chewing the fat, just bonsai stuff you know about whatever and we started talking about my approach to everything my approach to to life to um to how i run bonsai matsu how i engage with with anyone to do with bonsai and if you've reached out to me then you'll you'll, you'll be a testament to this that you know that i, I never try and overcomplicate it i try and break it down to be as simple as it possibly can and I strongly encourage you that, you know, when you're when you're talking, you know, with with any anyone or anything to do with with bonsai in particular, just try and keep it so it's so it's easy to understand. Break it down to its simplest possible form, and and run with that. You know, everyone can use big words and overcomplicate things and and really start to blur a message, but that tends to, in my experience, have people shut down. And go into their shells and sort of go, yep. You know, there's some some people that, that may really appreciate that that high end side of things, but but I've, I've generally found that I have a far greater success at 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 inclusion at, at bringing people in and giving them a big cuddle, a big bonsai cuddle, saying, yeah, come on, you can do this. This by breaking it down and making it easy and, and making it simple and not overcomplicating things. And you know, if there's a if there's an easy way to say things, then then definitely do it. Anyway, what I like to always think about is how can I get more people involved in bonsai, but not just get them involved in bonsai and and experience the same love and passion that I've got and and everyone listening to this podcast too, obviously, but how do I keep them there and how do I make sure that their their journey, their experience is, is, is as good as it possibly can be? How can I do whatever I can do to make that happen and and. I, like I say, I, I try and not overcomplicate things. I know there's a hell of a lot, and the more, the more you go down the rabbit hole with bonsai, the more that you know that there is there's some in depth stuff. You know, take take watering. Oh God, <laughs> watering's a nightmare. It's it's so hard to get it right. You know, and we work so hard on it. Something that sh- it sounds so easy, just watering your trees, but it's not. Like it, it varies so so significantly and so drastically that you know you want to try and not not simplified to the point of you know making it um, uh, making it ridiculously unobtainable by saying just you know give your trees water when they need it. Well, that's you know, but things like you know, for instance, fertilizing. You know, fertilizing your trees. God, that's that's a that's a minefield. Like, and it's so it's so in depth as to how you do it and why you do it. And sometimes you can't. You know, you, you, I go for that self justification thing where as long as I can explain it to myself, then then I'm good with it. But you know, you've got trees that have been freshly repotted. You've got trees that haven't been repotted for a long time. You've got highly ramified trees that you don't want to destroy foliage on in spring. You've got you know trees that you're developing, and and the fertilising system varies so drastically in between. But you come back to a real, you know, you get someone brand new in front of you that's dead keen that wants to know something. If you if you go into the the depths of something like fertilising your trees, then I, I reckon you're going to terrify them. So I try and make it that I have it as simple as possible, and I call it 
you know, the McDonald's approach to fertilising. You know, when you when you want chips from McDonald's, you only get one kind. You know, they don't they don't serve fat beer chips at McDonald's. You know, it's always the French fries, and they're consistently the same worldwide. You know, you eat them and. Sometimes they're a bit soggy, but you know, all in all, they're pretty much the same thing. And it's that consistency and simplicity that I really like with my sort of um, entry level uh, simplified fertilizing. You know, use a tea bag method, fertilize during spring and during autumn. Um, one bag of fertilizer per tree during, per month during spring, so it's three bags, and then two bags per tree per month during autumn. So that's, that's six bags. So all up, nine bags of fertiliser per tree. And I cannot tell you how many people I've had sit there with this this sort of terrified look when I start talking about fertilising. I want to break it down really simply and go, this is this is all you have to do. Nine tea bags of fertiliser per tree you know, on the basis that they, they're not you know sensitive to the fertiliser that we use. But all in all, this is what you do. And it's like, oh, my God, that's so simple. That's so easy. Could I have made it more complex? 100%. And, and will it get more complex for them? Absolutely. But is that the McDonald's approach to French fries? It certainly is. Will it make it easy for them and get them on the path and allow them to take those first simple steps into this world of bonsai and then let their passion thrive and grow? Of course it will. You know, is it? You know, they're not going to go out there and buy, well, I don't think they'll buy like something that is a super high-end tree where you need to get in depth with fertilising and stuff like that. But you've got to... You've got to start somewhere. And I always think that if you can really nut things down to to bullet point and sort of go, well, look, this is this is how you do this. You know, this is the sort of potting medium we, we use. Do they need to know the ins and outs of why we use it? No, it grows really good roots. What's good about that? Good, strong roots, good, strong tree, good, strong growth, good options for designing a tree. Perfect. Simple as that. That's it. Do you need to go into the the intricacies of, of pumice and you know, scoria and whatever else that's in the, the mix, I don't think you need to. Like there's time for that. You can get to that point. And if you know, people want to get into these these higher end and, and really dig deep, then go for it. Absolutely. But as I said, if I go back to my, my goal, my personal driver is to see how I can get more people involved in bonsai and – get them to stay in bonsai and enjoy it as much as I can. And I just think that, you know, if you don't overcomplicate things and you keep it really simple, keep it on a nice base level, not, not you know, don't skim over the facts. Don't, don't skim over things so they don't know all the information, but break down that information so, you know, a, a toddler could understand it and, and build it up from there. You know, don't, don't look down your snout and, you know, talk down to them and go, well, if you were a bit smarter, you'd – anyway – I think you get my point. I'm trying to encourage everybody that listens to this podcast that it's the right way to go is to bring more people into bonsai and let's keep them in there because if it's good for bonsai, it's good for all of us. And and don't um, you know don't don't make it overly complex. Let's keep it really really simple and, and precise and easy to understand. Righto, let's get this over and done with. Watering systems. <sighs> I'm going to have my blood pressure medicine. <laughs> this thing. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've got to talk about watering systems on this podcast. And you get it all right and everything works and you test it and you look for flaws and you look for imperfections and you fine tune and you get closer and closer and you buy buddy Wi-Fi switches and you've got everything covered and... You go away for uh, for a week and a half, and the weather suddenly spikes and get up gets up to the um, high thirties for for a period of time. Got your camera system, you tap in, you have a look. You know, I'm in another country, in New Zealand. Get on the camera system, look at the watering system. Yep, yeah, it looks good. It's it's working. Cool. Goes bang. Next zone's running. Jump in the next camera. Yep, that's working too. Cool. Okay, and so on and so forth. Anyway. So then about oh, maybe I think it was a day day before I came home, I, um, I messaged one of my daughters and uh, said, sweetie, do you reckon I've just seen one of the cameras, one of the little trees has just knocked over a little bit. It's not falling over. It's just pushed against another tree. Can you just go and straighten that up for me? And she goes, yep, no worries. She's just back from wherever she's from, you know, been away herself. She says, I'll just have a whip around the trees for you too, Dad. And I went, yep, that's great. Awesome. Thank you. And 
she rings me and says, oh, Ted, um, everything's good. That tree's fine. No worries. Nothing's crushed. Nothing's broken. I went, yeah, great. She goes, but some of the trees look just a little bit, a little bit dry in one area. And I went, oh, really? And I jumped on the camera to look. I went, oh, they still look okay. She goes, it's not, not bad, but it's just sort of some of them I just noticed on the tips. And I went, oh, okay. All right. So I'm thinking to myself, I've got you know, a couple of days to get home. Should be right. It's not too bad. And then suddenly the, you know, this hot, dry, northerly wind starts tearing through the joint. Weather starts to spike. So I jump on the watering system, up the frequency, do all the stuff that I've, I've planned for. Yep, check the cameras again. They're, they're working. It's all good. You know, instead of two runs a day, I'm doing, you know, four, maybe five runs a day. It all looks good. Anyway, so get home, race out. As soon as I hardly even got the bags in out of the car, race outside and had a look and I went, like, they're fine. That zone's fine. That zone's fine. Oh, bloody hell. What's happened over there? I look over the back and there's a few, few the, the colour on the leaves just look wrong. And I went, oh, no. Anyway, so raced in there, started watering, looking at the crispy leaves on these, a few of these. And, and nothing, no damage really done. All my, all my good trees were covered. They were, um, they were all good. This is all sort of stuff, um, stuff that's in development, smaller stock, you know. It, it, it's still a, still a shame. There's probably about 30 trees that are affected, I suppose. Um, so I'm upset about it. Don't get me wrong, but I've got to got to keep a lid on it, and keep it measured. So you know, go and do all the usual things that I, I I talk about when 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 things go wrong. Put them into a sheltered spot, isolate them, start um start different misting systems and whatever. And then I get walking around going, why the hell is this area not working? Why would this one out of them not be working? And then I go around and check the others and there's because I've got this backup, this redundancy from different solenoids, different lines, whatever. I looked at a couple and I went, yeah, a few, there's a few more over there. They're okay, but there's sort of I can see there's a few little issues that shouldn't be there. For the for the amount of watering I've been doing, that should be fine. So I get up there, turn on the watering system, run it while I'm standing there. Starts up, I go, what the bloody hell? Like this has worked. Gets about 10 seconds into running and then turns off. I went, so I check the app. The app says, no, I've still got another two and a half minutes to run. It's like, what? And then it goes to the next zone. Next zone fires up, starts to spit out water, gets about 10 seconds in, switches off. It's like, oh, no, something's wrong. So suddenly jump into it, start looking at the solenoids, jump online immediately, order a new one because I've got one there that's, you know, one of these, these solenoid blocks and thinking that's failed. You know, there's got water in there, something seized up, whatever it is. And... um. Order a new one. Yep, express. It'll be here the next day. So I went, okay, cool. So I'm moving forward on this. Anyway, new solenoid system turns up. Get it all tapped in. Wire it up. You know, plumb it in. Perfect. Get on the phone. Go to start it up. Ten seconds off. It's like, oh, well, so it's not the not the solenoid that's stuffed. So I keep working back, checking the cabling. No cracks. No kinks. Get back to the controller. Look at the controller. Controllers on on Wi-Fi. Zones are all registered. I get on my app, and the controller's all connected as well. Everything's green light. And it's like, you know, there's ticks everywhere saying everything's working. Go to run it all. No, 10 seconds off. Anyway, so then all of a sudden on the screen on this controller pops up, you know, server connection timeout. I went, oh, that's unusual. So I jump onto the help for, for this, this controller. I said, hey, you know, can you help me? And they said, yep, we can see you've got two controllers online, everything's all right. And I go, no, nah, it's not, mate. <laughs> this thing keeps switching off after 10 seconds, only on certain zones, not on all of them, only on some of them. And he's like, oh, okay, well, you know, swap your Wi-Fi to another network. I went, yep, done, can do that. Checked it, same error, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Okay, do a restart of your modem, do a restart of your Wi-Fi, do a restart of your controller, all the usual rubbish that I've done a thousand times already. Anyway... He says, "Right, last chance. Let's hotspot it to your phone and see if that's, you know, if it's your home modem internet or if it's your, you know, controller." Gets on the hotspot my phone. Lo and behold, yep, still the same error, same issue with it. And he's like, "Oh, really?" He sends me back an email. I'm really sorry, but your Wi-Fi module in your controller has failed. Only option you have is to purchase a new controller. <laughs> it's like I have planned for everything that I thought was possible <laughs> with this watering system except for the Wi-Fi module controller failing. Now, I said, you know, how does it happen? Couldn't get an answer. Anyway, this system, I must admit, like as I've said, this system has been bulletproof for years. 
like, you know, uh, over 10 years, 12 years, whatever. So maybe it's getting old. I don't know. I, 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 I just can't put my finger on what it is. It's been in a, um, a UPS, an uninterrupted power supply, so it can't get spikes. It can't get damage from, you know, voltage drop or anything like that. What do you do? What do you do? And, you know, the, the worst thing, and, and this is where I knew it would happen, <laughs> it stopped just as the weather hit. High 30s, you know, 37, 38, strong northerly winds, just when you don't want it to. It's not when it's, you know, winter, when you could get away with it and there'd be no damage. But at the point where there's potentially the most damage, this thing stopped working. So now there's an easy way that I could have never talked about this at all. I could have kept this to myself and not told anybody. But the reason why I want to talk about the podcast is just to let you know that we're all human. And when things go wrong, don't don't worry about it. Don't don't fret. I know it. I personally know that it feels like an absolute kick in the guts when things go wrong, especially when you've done everything you could possibly do. Like I, I was so hard on myself when I came home, thinking, should I have cut my trip short? Should I have not done this? Should I have done that? Whatever. But it comes down to it that certain things are completely outside your control. You know, we, the other night we had we had a storm roll through, and within fifteen minutes, mid afternoon. We lost all power in the house until, you know, I, I had workshop that night. I had to cancel that or postpone it. Um, you know, the fridge shuts down. have to get out a bloody petrol generator, which I haven't ever done before in my life, to, to fire up the fridge because the power doesn't come on till till middle of the night. It's like and, and if, I was, if I was somewhere else and I was relying on all of my controllers, everything in the world to, to get things right and a freak storm rolls through and wipes out everything – there's, I can't plan for that. You can't get around that sort of stuff. So, you know, you you can build in as much as you want. I, I I definitely wouldn't have changed anything that I've done. And if you're if you're listening to this and you think, well, that's the reason I don't go away, or that's the reason why I'll never have you know that many bonsai, or that's the re- whatever it is, I think you need to need to think about it because you still got to have a life. Like if Bonsai, bonsai is definitely you know a massive part of my life. Like it is, it is almost completely my life. But there's things outside that that make me enjoy bonsai more. I never want to look at my bonsai and think, "You are a burden. You are a pain in the ass. You are something that I don't want to do because you stop me from going away. You stop me from enjoying my life, and you stop me from doing this, that, and whatever it is." So. I wanted to be honest and share it and say, yep, sure, I'm going to have fatalities with this. Not all of them are going to bounce back. There's a few that I'm starting to get ready to take out of the pots now. That's how quickly this all happened. You know, can I change something? Yep, certainly I've upgraded the controller again. I don't know. I've still got more comments with the um, the people at the at the controller head office to sort of see if this is something you can test for, if it's something that, is built in, you know, how do you get around a redundancy for this sort of stuff? You know, I just don't know how you can. But, you know, I'll still keep still keep working. I'll still use the system. I still love the system. I still think it's highly reliable. And, you know, I've upgraded my controller, bang, checked it all, everything's working fine. Will I still go away? Will I still travel? Will I will I still get out there and love my bonsai and and still be away from them? Hundred percent. I definitely will. And I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna let it stop me from from moving forward so there you are folks with uh, with best intentions and you know all this hard work still hits a fan every now and then Right now, to wrap up the podcast, I just want to talk about an old friend that's come back to me. Beautiful prickly paper bark. It's been kindly returned from the National Bonsai and Pension Collection up in Canberra. And it looks amazing. <laughs> it looks so good. And I am so happy to have it back. I seriously, you know, I talk about giving your trees a hug. This one, it got a big hug. <laughs> I had a quiet time with it by myself, just working it back to the yard saying, geez, I've missed you. It's been looked after beautifully, lovely foliage on it. So thank you to Sam and Lee up in uh, up in Canberra for looking after it and everyone, all the volunteers, everyone everyone up, up at the collection for, for the hard work that they put in. You know that anyone that listens to the podcast know that I'm a big supporter of these guys and I love what they do for Australian bonsai and 
you know, it's it's so nice to have the tree back in my collection. It I love I love sending trees away for um for for a display like that and to allow a lot of people to enjoy them and marvel at how beautiful our, our bonsai are here in Australia. But oh my god, it's so good to get it get it back. And I've really, really missed it. Like I didn't think I would um miss a tree like I have this one, but this one's really, really special to me. So um yeah. And while I'm talking about the um the guys up in Canberra too, they've got a big event coming on up there called Bonzo Reshaped. It's running from the eleventh to the fourteenth of April called, you know, obviously Bonzo Reshaped and it's got some some international guests coming over. Um Morton Albeck from um from from the show in Bonsai. If any anyone's you know, looked at any bonsai books, you would have seen his book come through. So he's one of the demonstrators up there. So, and Marja Hadjik too. So from Croatia, if you um, if you're interested, then by all means jump on their website and have a look. But it's I know I've I've been involved myself personally with the um, with one of the reshaped events, and it's they're awesome. It's such a such a good weekend, and you know, buying buying some bargains up there too. They have a lot of markets and stuff like that, and as well as workshops and. You know, different skill levels, so it's definitely worth worth having a look if you're um, if you're so inclined. And if you haven't already, please jump on to YouTube and subscribe to the Bonsai Machu channel. I've been flat out on it this year. You know, I've I've told you at the start that I'm I'm driven now. I am I am determined to be more um more more prevalent on there and more consistent. Now I've had a couple of years off, and I'm getting faster putting these videos together got this enormous thing to do for the New Zealand trip which will take me a while but you know that's coming and then you know I can tell you now there's the next one's being uh, being filmed in the next couple of days where I'm going to work on one of my beautiful cedars and and put that on there so keep an eye out for um for that when it starts starts rolling through again scammers buddy please beware you know I'm not selling my trees online if you've seen any of my photos just let me know or call out anyone's you know anyone anyone else stealing anyone else's photos on Anywhere around the world and using them as their own, it's, it's no good, especially when they're trying to take money from you. So <laughs> just be bloody careful. Don't, um, don't get into it. And, yeah, like I said, if you, um, if you get a chance to – you love trees and you get a chance to head over to New Zealand, then I strongly encourage it. It's some of the most amazing landscape that I've ever seen and it's, um, it's definitely on, on a highlight list for me. It's going to be on a regular return list as well. I can tell you that now that um, – as far as an overseas trip goes, it's uh, it's a lovely place, really, really nice. It's like um, it's like going up the up up country to to hills that we don't have that I, I don't have access to here in Melbourne, not in a, not my close vicinity. You know, it's uh, it's truly incredible and 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 just was an amazing amazing experience all around. And you would have noticed too, maybe 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 not that um, you know we we're sort of starting to get shorter daylight hours now. And trees are starting to turn their leaves, even though we've got bloody hot weather. <laughs> Look around the country, I've been saying it for months, but we um, we seem to be getting spikes with the hot weather now. Um, you know, 37 one day, storm rolls through back to 20 the next day with rain. So pff, Melbourne, huh? But definitely the trees are starting to turn turn colour in, in spots as well, starting to get some um, some autumn autumn colour. So the next episode of the podcast, I'm going to be starting to talk about start talk about fall or autumn and, and what to do and what to start getting ready for and start to plan for. So there'll be um, there'll be a bit more bonsai focus. This one I wanted to um, just talk about my experiences and, you know, what I've been up to and all that sort of stuff and, and just have a general chit-chat about bonsai. But, um, yeah, the watering system, I don't know. <laughs> Scratch my head. I've done everything I can do. It still happens. But anyway, it's um it's all it's all good. We'll just keep moving forward and please um please do all you can to to try and try and get your systems as, as good as you possibly can. But appreciate that um, we're all human and things go wrong and when it does, just keep moving forward. That's all we do. Alright? So till next time, as always, happy one day.